Hello, good morning, or afternoon, or evening. Whatever time zone applies, please uh, apply that to yourself. Welcome to today's video where we are discussing throwing off the hump. My name is Lily and I am a ceramicist here in London. This is my studio. Around me, I'm inside my studio. I make functional ceramics for my brand, May Ceramics. And today I am discussing throwing off the hump. Throwing off the hump is a really fun way of, and efficient way actually, of making small things. You just center a big old bit of clay. You make your little piece off that, cut it off, and then move on to the next one. You don't need to keep centering little bits of clay. You just center the little bit, the little mountain that you need. I really love throwing off the hump. I think it's really fun. Sometimes you might be tempted to make something quite big off the hump or something quite small, or you can do bowls, you can do bottles, you can do like teeny tiny things if you want. I've made these guys, some little, uh, little bud jars, I guess, which I'm gonna be having on the tables at my wedding. I've also thrown these guys off the hump. These are little tea light candle holders. Firstly, I wanna apologize for the weird lighting differences in this video. The only time that I could make these things off the hump was at nighttime. And the lighting in here is my big old fluorescence. And I don't like them. They don't make for great video quality, but here we are. It's fine, it is what it is. Right. Number one, first thing you have to do with throwing off the hump is you gotta wedge up a big ball of clay. I don't bother weighing it, I just wedge it and go for it. Um, you need to be comfortable with centering a large bit of clay at this stage. So if you're very new to pottery and centering is still quite difficult for you, then, I mean, give it a go, see how you do, but you do kind of need to roughly center it. The most important thing is to have the piece that you're working on centered. So I like to center the whole thing and then go from there centering my little bit as needed. I then kind of separate, like I make a little shelf for myself for the piece that I'm working on so that I don't go too deep. Um, it's very easy when you're throwing off the hump to like cut through the bottom um, and you end up with like a hollow tube. You're probably not looking for that in your work. So you need to just kind of separate where the base is gonna be. Then you make your thing. I'm making bud vases. They're all different sizes. I didn't measure them. They, because they're like centerpieces at a wedding, they're not gonna be like compared to each other. They're all kind of designed to be different. If you are going for a specific size, then you can like use a little ruler or something. But for me, it didn't matter. Probably the clay is like higher than you're used to because probably usually throw your individual bits of clay which you're going to be a little bit lower on the wheel. When you're using bigger bits of clay you're kind of naturally higher. If you anchor yourself usually on the splash pan or your knees you'll find that you are going to need a different point to anchor yourself. So just make sure you like tuck your elbows right in and you kind of like anchored up here rather than down. <laughs> on the wheel. So you make your shape and then you cut it off. I use a wooden knife tool or like something to kind of make a little ridge in the clay where I'm gonna cut. You need to kind of guide the wire and be kind of precise with it where you want it to go. You can't use the base of the wheel head as you usually would to pull the wire through. So you need to give it a helping hand by making a little divot for it. Once I've done that, I slow the wheel right down and then I take my wire, pull it taut and very slowly just bring it through while the wheel is still moving. You can practice this on straight on the wheel head. You don't have to do it off the hump. Uh, and this will cut it off and it will leave kind of like a spiral. I'm sorry I haven't got a shot for this, but it will leave a little spiral on the bottom. And that's fine. You could just have to like practice holding your wire as straight as possible. If you're up or down either side, you'll get a bigger 
kind of chunk of clay as part of the spiral. You can also use like a string where you get a little bit of string and you kind of just hold it in place and the string kind of gets caught on the clay and cuts it for you. It's quite cool. I've done that in the past. I don't think it helps or hinders in any way. I just prefer the wire because I've got it there. Some people also like use their pottery knife tool, their wooden knife and just kind of keep pushing it in until it cuts it off. And um, that's another way that you can do it. But for me, I'm just a wire girl. It's the same as usual. But once you've made that divot to help the wire go through, that's where you're gonna like pick the clay up from as well. So um, the same as I would just throwing off the wheel head, I kind of grab it right at the bottom and I kind of unstick it and then put it aside. That's kind of it. Then you can keep making until your clay runs out. And then you just kind of proceed as normal. You let your pieces dry. You can trim them as you, you would usually trim them. So my little ones over here, these guys were trimmed just as normal. I put them upside down on the wheel, used my loop tool, trimmed them. These ones, I didn't have time to come back the next day and trim them. So I let them dry and then I used my rasp tool, this thing, to trim them essentially. And I, again, I didn't have time to make a chuck for them. I used this as like, a cheats method. If you have trouble with bottles and forms that are closed and you need a chuck and you like can't really vibe with that, keep practicing because you will get it. But if you don't have time, you can use a rasp. And I'm sorry, but I lost all my footage for this. Um, I don't know where it's gone, but it's gone. So I've made a little extra bit of footage with a pinch pot that I had in my studio and I've shown you exactly how I did it. So I just kind of dunk it in water or I use a sponge to get it wet and then you just kind of slide your rasp over the clay and it kind of just shaves it all off. And then you're left with like pretty much the same finish as you would when you trim it. It's a little bit messier but this is going to be glazed and I honestly think you don't notice it. Yeah, a great little cheat. I'm going to glaze these in the coming week. I will make sure I show you what they look like at the wedding. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already, because um, you'll definitely see them on there. A aforementioned wedding is coming up in the next three weeks, which is bonkers to me. I can't believe it. Um, but that means that I'm going to be a little bit busier than usual and my posting schedule is off from now. So I'm going to be posting one video in between now and like probably the start of March. So keep an eye out for that. And I'm also kind of planning my posting schedule again. And I'd love to know what you would like to see more of, what you'd like help with, what videos you find most interesting. Please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to include that in upcoming videos. If you have any more questions about throwing off the hump, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. And I'll see you after the wedding. Goodbye.